Hey everyone, welcome back to the Biz Talk for TikTok show. This is your host, Kyle Kaplanis. Today, we are going to be talking about the powers that TikTok has for your e-commerce company, no matter how new or small it is. Even for you entrepreneurs listening out there, it might not have an e-commerce company. This episode is going to be the one that you want to listen to. On the show, I have Matt, who is the owner of Matt's Beard Bar which is a product that is the quickest and most efficient way to clean up beard trimmings in a bathroom. I have a video clip we'll share later on what that actually looks like. Those of you that are watching this later on the YouTube video can take a look and see what that is. He has a TikTok, Matt's Beard Bard, with 36.6 thousand followers. And some of you who listened to my show in the past, you have seen that I've had guests on my show that have millions of followers, some who have hundreds of thousands of followers, but I really wanted this guest to share his experience and where he's been and showing how TikTok has revolutionized his business with under 100,000 followers. So Matt, welcome to Biz Talk for TikTok. Thank you, Carol. Thanks so much for having me. I remember when you first reached out, I was like, wow, this is the first podcast. This is a great introduction. I appreciate it so much. And yeah, I completely agree. I still feel like it's fresh in my memory of the first day I started. So I think it'll definitely be a good episode. Absolutely. What, what I wanted to ask you first is, have you had this product prior to launching on TikTok? A little bit. I remember I started this project, if you want to call it, I mean, it's a full scale company, but it still feels like a project was um, yeah. like a COVID baby. I started designing and prototyping. And then once I had something solid, I went to Instagram and uh, a little bit on Reddit and on TikTok, like all at once. Then I just seen the power of TikTok. I was a little bit on it as a viewer on my personal account. Yeah. And I made my business account. And as soon as my first video blew up, I said, okay, this is it. I. I don't even really pay attention to my Facebook, Instagram. I post stuff on there time to time, but uh, TikTok's the hub for sure. <laughs> you basically came up with the product and were like, okay, I got to get on social media. Let's just try a few platforms and see what happens. So uh, outside of TikTok, what was the outcomes there? Were you getting any traction at all on Facebook or Instagram with your product? Honestly, not really. Reddit was probably second best. I found good subreddits like male grooming or beards, and I just said, hey, I made this. I don't know if you guys struggle with this too, but it got to the front page of those subreddits for the day. Awesome. So there was some good traction, got some uh, good comments, some good questions. And then in, the Instagram and Facebook were pretty much like nothing happening Our until I was, I was posting, but there was no one really viewing it. I mm -hmm. would follow some accounts. I would try to comment on some big pages, but it was very minimal compared to TikTok or even Reddit. Reddit was pretty decent. That's awesome that you bring up Reddit because it is something that a lot of people don't consider to add into their strategy. It's reaching people by more of a text feature. Were you using more blog posts or were you sharing videos on Reddit as well? It was pictures. I would have a couple pictures with the product and like inside the bathroom and just with a caption description for the post. And I said, this is how it's intended to be used. What do you guys think type of thing? Yeah, so it wasn't a full cool. scale action video. That's cool, man. Before we dive in more about TikTok, when you go to your page, it doesn't look, and I'm not dissing this. This is not a diss at all. This is just a realism for other people that are looking. It's not like high quality. You don't have this big studio where you're showing this product, like a TV commercial, you're just doing it in your own bathroom. And I think that's more realistic for small businesses who think, okay, I got to launch. Now I have to do this big production to be able to talk about my product. And that's not true. You don't need that. This is proof in, in there right now. You just sharing some product photos, which was probably in your own bathroom on Reddit, got some traction. And then not only that, but the videos on TikTok look like they're just right there in your own bathroom too, showing the product. And those really captivated people because why it looks real. So when I'm just seeing a normal video of somebody in their bathroom that looks unedited, I can picture myself in that scenario versus if you were to do yeah. it in a high quality space, it, you can't visualize that. You just think this is super commercial for businesses out there. Don't worry about that stuff. Just come with what you have. If you only have a phone, that's all you need right now. And, and just to add on to that, I think, like you mentioned, the 
not high production, just regular iPhone use, like realistic scenarios is what you need to have. Because if you have high production stuff, it makes it more unrelatable. E even this day and age with Photoshop, there's ways you can edit videos to make it seem mm -hmm. if you see something pretty, pretty natural, it's more relatable. It's more genuine. And I think that's uh, just the characteristic of TikTok. where before I even started my business, I seen like all these videos blow up and they're just so genuine people like the comedy stuff or just like random things going on. It seems very refreshing compared to Instagram, which to me seems very, uh, yeah. Um, edited in a way <laughs> very it's like that picture perfect life but behind the scenes it's not like that that's where we are and that's where social media was for a long time and i agree i think tiktok has really brought us back to being human being real and raw and showing what the reality looks like for not only businesses but just people in general just being able to be fun and real and what i love about tiktok as well is like everybody is accepted regardless of their disabilities the way they look if they're just fun and, and open to talk, they're building communities on there for whoever they are. They don't have this picture perfect self. It's really pushing people outside of their limits and, and making them have to really show who they are. And that is really important when it comes to, you know, branding as well, is that people are not just looking for the product now. Overhyping the product, people want to hear that story. Where did it come from? Who's the people behind it? What's the story there? And I think that's what's really been important for you is that you're not just talking about the product and it's not just the product focus. You're in the videos. You're talking about your story. You're talking about the orders that you're doing. You're showing people what does that look like in the back of your car, like the grind of it. And I think that's what's relatable because people can see, wow, this is a real guy that's really working hard for this. I want to support that not necessarily the product of course they're going to but sometimes people just generally connect with somebody on their level and want to support that because they're sharing their story when you started tiktok did you get instant success there or was it a few posts did it take a while to get those viral videos? I, I believe it was my third or fourth post that went viral i think it got over a hundred thousand views or something yeah. and over time it went over to a million views mm -hmm. um I think I got pretty lucky with that because one, this all started because I couldn't find a product out there like it. So yeah, um, I realized it's something new and it's interesting. Like you said, it was just organic video. It just looked like very simple in the bathroom and that kind of took off. And that's when everything changed for me. I just posted another video. Like I usually do at around 6 PM and then I was getting ready to go to a friend's house. We were having a couple of drinks and I was getting a little tipsy. And then all of a sudden the orders started coming in. I, I didn't know what to do. I was very uh, overwhelmed and I was just trying to document everything like day to day, just, uh, right. almost, you know, a, a, a personal diary, but online with everyone. So I had the intention to make it relatable with other people because it's, it, it was so surreal happening. It's I'm just a regular dude and it just started taking off. So why not document it? I love that you say that documentation because it that's telling your brand story and having people be in the moment with you is what is so compelling. And I think brands that are failing now are because they have that lack of connecting with their audiences on their whole concepts level. In the past, it was just talk about your product, product, product. You go to people's Instagram pages and it's just, let's say I sell mugs. It's only mugs. That's all you see. In reality, you're like, what is that mug? Like, what's the story behind it? Why should I buy that? What was the backstory there? There's so many products out there, especially Gen Z is really focused on that story. So it's really important for businesses that are going to continue to grow in the space as Gen Z ages up where they already have a huge, huge monetary power out there to be able to make product purchases or influence in the house to make product purchases is really important to connect on their level. It's proof right there that your story, just sharing your product on there, like in a real way connected with people to, to make some purchases. And I wanted to quickly share a video because people might be thinking, well, okay, what is this product anyway? Cause you said there's nothing like that. I wanted to share a quick video of your product. This is a video that you shared on your TikTok. I wanted to share it with the audience today. If you're listening on the podcast right now, pause this podcast, go to your TikTok app and search up Matt's Beard Bar and scroll through some of his videos so you can understand his product right now and then come back. Here's the video.
Okay, if you're asking if it was a necessary purchase, uh, I don't really have an answer for you, buddy. But if you're asking if I think everybody on this planet just needs one of them, the answer's a little obvious. I love that video because it was it's one of your more recent videos, but it shows the product, but it also shows all those products ready to go, ready to be shipped out. That's massive. One of the most important things about running my business is documenting stuff and making random videos. And I'll just be like going through my day. I'd be like, hang on, maybe I should take out my phone and just do a quick video. I can use this video later. And that's what that was. All those parts of the video were like all previous stuff I had. And I just found a good audio. I'm like, oh, this would be perfect. Yes. So I went ahead, took some old videos, some that made sense to be put together in a video and just posted it. And that's what it turned into. Yeah, and that video right now has 3.8 million views, which people would dream for that for their business. And how much did that video cost you to get that views? This, it's free. It's crazy. I, <laughs> there's no point in, in, in doing paid ads even, it's especially on Instagram. That's nothing can really beat TikTok at this point, at the time of this summer, 2021, I think TikTok is like miles ahead let's say you were to buy that many views for an ad that would cost you with a ten dollar cpm on tiktok that would be like a forty thousand dollar video that people would have to buy to reach that many people but you were able to do that for free and target the right people because clearly that video wasn't just a dud it has increased your sales you probably noticed on your back end the sales just going crazy is that true oh yeah, it's like a roller coaster. It's very stable and off some boom, just straight up within 24 hours, just huge amounts of skills. I try to build up my, my inventory and it just completely crushes it. And then I'm on a back order again. I try to do a lot of preemptive stuff, like put a little banner on my website, say, Hey, there's going to be a back order. If there is a back order, I reach out once a week and give people an update, like where I'm at with orders. I just try to be really, really transparent with my customers. Cause at the end of the day, they are paying for something and it, anyone would be wondering, Hey, if it's not arriving, where is it? Before they start asking me, I, I try to give them some information and transparency on my end. Some of these viral videos, how much orders do you typically see from like big spikes like that? What do you see coming through? It obviously ranges, right? And it's not always correlated to the amount of views. Cause okay. I, I yep. had a video that had 4 million views and that translated into about, let's give or take 2000 orders. Yeah. And then this one has uh 3.8 million, so it's less views, but it, it had like close to 4,000 orders in yeah. that video. What's interesting, sometimes people feel like they need these huge viral videos with millions and millions of views to make product sales, but that's not necessarily true because like you said, the correlation sometimes isn't there. Sometimes your video might go crazy, but it's not reach reaching the right audiences. Or sometimes you could have a video that has a hundred thousand views and it's all the right people. And that video can translate into even more sales. People are focused on virality. It's, it's not necessary to be able to be successful. You could even have 10,000 view video that you just reach the right people. And those people are now going to tell their friends and make sales. People that are listening, they might think, oh, I need 4 million views, all these things, but that's not true. Have you seen product sales from videos that were a little bit less? Yeah. Yeah. If we're talking numbers like that, there's some videos I have where I got 50 to 60,000 views. So nothing too crazy, even 30, 40,000 views. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's right on the money in my situation. I talk about what the problem is and why my solution is the, yeah. uh, the best one out there. It doesn't have to uh, have a lot of views. Also yeah. with TikTok, sometimes people might see a really short video. It's only like six seconds long and it, people watch it twice or whatever. If you watch it twice, every person watches it, you just doubled your views, but mm -hmm. sometimes you might have a longer post and people only watch half of it or whatever. And yeah, the views might not look as much as a, like a shorter video, but it's just as powerful with TikTok videos. Sometimes I try so hard to make a good video. I'm editing this and that and it just flops. I totally. have a lot of those. You can see a million views. I'm only at 36,000 So some people that might be a lot. Some people might that be a little. But I really don't have an advantage as far as making a video and having it be seen by a lot of people. My last one, I still have 36,000 followers, but only 600 people seen it. The playing field is really even and mm -hmm. it's, 
anyone's got a shot at it. If people like your video and interact with it and stuff, you'll blow up, make it fun or interesting or entertaining in some way. Mm -hmm. And as you know, and I'm sure your followers know, TikTok is just very genuine and just something that it doesn't even have to be that interesting per se, like something crazy, like jumping out of a plane. Yeah. Um, it can just be a conversation you're having and it can really take off. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommending just trying it out, try different things, different styles, different types of TikToks, different sounds, and just wait and see and just look what people are doing, what yeah. they're interacting with. 100%. really is true. TikTok is a level playing field for everybody. Sometimes you see some of these huger creators, they're going to harbor a lot more views. But for the main people that are, you know, coming to TikTok, regardless of your following, even if you're at 200,000, Somebody that's brand new with less than a thousand still has the same opportunity to reach views. I had somebody on my show named Willy Wonka TikTok, which a lot of people know him. He's got over 20 million followers. And he even said that there's accounts out there that have less than 10 followers who have outreached him on a video of views for the day than his account with over 20 million. That's proof right there that everybody has the equal opportunity. You have the opportunity to reach those for you pages for free and not have to pay where some of these other, you know, sources like Facebook and Instagram that are so overly saturated, they have enough content on their platforms right now that in order to get reach organically, well, not organically, good luck with that. That's really hard work. You're going to have to grind hard, but in order to get a big reach and be able to get these sales, you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay a lot of money for, for ads yeah. and, and all those things. And that's what people are thinking, but why not add TikTok to your strategy and test out the waters there with real people who you have the opportunity to reach. I feel like TikTok has a good community where you get feedback pretty quickly. So let's say you're testing out a product and you wanted to ask questions to random people, instead of sending out a survey that you don't have a database of, you might only have your friends and family and they might be a little biased. Why not reach out to a community and you could get feedback really quickly from the TikTok audience. Have you used TikTok in that regard? Like asking questions or saying, is this a pain point for you in your life with beard trimmings? Are people commenting things back? Yeah, that's, I think one of the most powerful things about TikTok is that the engagement with, with your followers or whoever's watching your video is, is super high in, inside the comments. It's you, you get questions, you get everything. I love interacting with people. You can stitch the question, make a whole video as an answer. Exactly. And I, I remember seeing or thinking back in the day, oh, wouldn't emails be cool if um, I could just like somehow upload a quick YouTube video as a response to them. I'm like, that's literally what you can do with TikTok. Going back to your question about uh, getting feedback, my two smaller sizes of beard bars were inspired by one of my followers, Liz. She's like, hey, you should make a smaller one. And then that comment got more likes. So I seen that other people thought the same thing. Yes. And I went on my end, designed something smaller, prototyped it and put it out there and replied to her, be like, Hey, I made this. And then that kind of took off. And now it's a, a standard uh, product with me that's still on my store. I think it's very important because closing that feedback cycle, super tight to just be able to talk with your audience and see what their pain points are. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll tell you what's good, what's bad. And yeah. all you have to do is really listen. They're guiding you. So it, it's, exactly. Uh, if, if you know how to listen, I think that's a porn trade as entrepreneur, but <laughs> if you can do that, the, the answers are there. That's what I love about it as well is because on other platforms, or maybe you're just running on your website and you have to send out those surveys and it might take you a lot longer to understand where your product needs to be or what people would like to see. If you weren't on TikTok, that might've took you years to understand, to make a smaller size, right? But with TikTok being so engaging and people just wanting to help in a way like, Hey, you should try this and this people are not afraid to, to say that in the comments, which is really helpful for, for people that are building something, even if you've had a business for a long time, this is a great way to get new, fresh people on your business. But how cool is that your audience was able to say that and maybe in your mind, because you're so busy and focused with these orders of your regular size product that you were like, oh, that's a good idea. And I love that you said that you t paid attention to people liking that particular comment and saying, hey, this comment is just getting a lot of likes. That means that other people are interested in that particular statement. And I think that's another thing that I like is people are very active comment section. So therefore 
you might get a lot of likes on things. So you can even ask people comments within the video in the comment section. You can even make a couple questions and test things out in there and see how many people like things. And there's so many opportunities for people to use to get feedback without it being salesy. You can make it natural and, and not being like, oh, you're just wanting to gain more stuff or whatever. Nobody has that. They're just wanting to be involved. So that's really cool. I love that story that your follower were able to give you that guidance. That's super cool. That's the whole beauty of it. That's why when you talk about um, building a brand and building a community and having a story behind it, TikTok, it's almost when you think about what would I need? TikTok is pretty much that you make videos, you can interact with fans. They can see your past stuff. They can DM you. There's links to the website. Honestly, I think about how to improve TikTok and sometimes I struggle because there's literally a little bit of everything. And I, I saw something the other day that was kind of weird. It's like, Hey, someone's using my sound without my permission. And we're like. That TikTok is all about sharing and using each other's stuff. So it's um, stitching it or duetting. So it's very big on collaboration and stuff like that. And, and exactly. that's what I love. That's, people, kids, these, it's, everyone's so creative. That app amazes me oh. at how like creative people can get. And I'm like, wow. I know. I, I do love that as well. And I agree with you. I think TikTok's done a really good job on constantly adding features that are like, oh my gosh, like, can you make this any better? It just keeps getting better and better. Now they have the three minute video, which is really huge for some businesses for how to videos to show a longer step-by-step -step process on, on how to, like you could show a longer video on how it works, like how from start to finish, and you can definitely make that into three minutes. So businesses out there sometimes are thinking under 60 seconds, I can't fit everything in. Well, now they have the three minute option for you, which is so cool. They have playlist options where you can sort your videos in specific categories. The reply to comment feature, nobody else has something like that. That's huge. Like you said, stitching and duetting is huge. So that way your community can join like, Hey, stitch me. If you have my product, stitch me, you using it in your house, being able to get real feedback within videos. There's so much opportunities there for people to use. And a lot of people are still using the traditional Instagram where you can't really collaborative, creative together. And that's what you said. Like, it's like a collaboration where everyone gets to just have fun with each other and share those insights and everything. And just to add on to that, now going back to Instagram, it just feels really clunky and it just seems very outdated at this point. I know it's very big. If you started on TikTok and that or on Instagram and it built up their brand, keep going with it. But if you're starting fresh, I say get the handle for your brand or your, your service or whatever you're doing and go ahead and make it. But try TikTok, see for yourself where the results are and it's an organic reach and it's, it's, it's exactly. super powerful. Exactly. I mean, even if I made it again, I feel like you see that little paid sponsored post and we're so conditioned to see an ad and you're just like, it doesn't even really register. You're like, this isn't natural and you just move past it. It's a really great app for just organic reach. I couldn't agree more. We, we are conditioned with ads. You skip them. Like you just, you're over it. I think that's where we are. That's why I said it's really important now to humanize your brand. Make it more human, be able to be relatable for people to watch. And clearly it's working for you because if you were to make it like an advert, people would just skip it and be annoyed with you. But because you're just relatable, raw and real, share it and they want to support that. And that's really the important thing to share there. And I think that's going to be the future. I think that even big brands, if they don't continue to do that in the future, people are going to care less about it. They're not going to support those people anymore because they're not sharing their realism behind them. Money can buy you so much. And a good example of that is Quibi. Remember that streaming service, Quibi? They had billions of dollars, Familiar. right? They had billions of dollars. They were a streaming service, 10 minute videos, but they weren't really connecting with their audience on what the audience wanted to hear. People were commenting all the time. This is dumb. You should add more shows like this. Yet they were not listening to their audience or anything like that. And it failed and they had tons of money backing them up. And that's a great example of just because you think you have all this money, that doesn't mean anything. How are you going to relate to your community? How are you going to listen to them? And if you're taking the time to actually speak with them. That's what's going to keep them around. And they're going to be a fan for a long time. They're going to love your product because they know they had a conversation with you, or they know a little bit about your story. So when they're using it, it connects to them on a deeper level versus them just clean up 
their beard shavings or whatnot. I wanted to ask you quickly too, because this is an interesting thing. Do you have a lot of female purchasers? Yes. I don't have the exact number, but when packaging orders and orders coming in and also with, since my account is a business account, it tells me male to female yeah. uh, ratio of followers. And it's almost on the dot 70, 30, 70% females, Female. 30% yep. males of followers. So obviously I struck something right there. I created this product because I was so upset with my roommate who wouldn't clean up after himself and we share a bathroom. <laughs> and I was almost like the wife and the husband that the wife is always getting upset. It turned out to be very relatable. <laughs> 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 that happened to a buddy of mine who also is in an e-commerce situation on TikTok. He sells a product called the Scruffy. You may have seen him. He sells a neck shaver. It looks a little bit interesting. It's like something you'd see out of the Saw movie. <laughs> it's really? very interesting. Yeah. But it was geared for men. Instead of going to a hairdresser or having somebody help you be able to clean up your neck line on your neck. Yeah was able to do that, but he was sharing it on TikTok and it blew up, same thing, lots of product sales. But the interesting thing was exactly the female audience came in and was like, okay, this product's for men, but does this work on legs? And he was like, never even intended to use that product for legs. And now it's one of the number one sellers for females because they're buying them for their legs. And now he's changed a for her feature, which is huge. He would have never have gotten that before. And now it's easy for women. And that's, what's fun. I think about TikTok as well on Instagram. It's so niche focused. You might've not even have targeted any women. It might've just shown men and it would have been slow, but because of TikTok and the female audience coming in and saying this, that was a pain point for them. Who is this going to be faster for me to shave my legs? And same with you, like you understood that pain point of somebody not cleaning up their beard trimmings and, and guy all been in that situation where somebody's probably nagged us in our life about it. Right? Like my wife too, I think. All of us out there, we definitely need to use that beard bar to help our, our wives feel good. But a lot of wives are like, oh, I need something so I can clean it up or here, use this. So there's going to be a lot of women out there that are purchasing these things for their husbands, boyfriends, fathers. So that's really cool that you're able to still target that. And that's an interesting statistic, 70, 30, even though your product is geared mostly for males, unless there's females yeah. out there that are dry shaving their legs on the counter or something, but I literally made one like for my cousin, who was my roommate to use. I just ended up using it more than him, but it was just a good, very satisfying way to use it. Yeah. And same thing. I, I, I get it. And there's a lot of females buy it as a gift. They say it's a gift for him, but really if he uses it, then I'm the one that's benefited <laughs> from it. So it's. It's a lot of stuff like that. And whoever is supposed to be, I it's geared towards men to use it, but sometimes I see I'm going to be the one who ends up using it, this or that. And my mission has always been just make sure every sink in America is clean and it's been working out pretty good, but it is very funny to see how females are the ones who are buying it, are interested in it and are uh, excited for it too. But also the guys too, a lot of guys buy it for yeah. themselves. They like to, they like to clean up and just the other solutions out there, like toilet paper, there are ways to clean up, but it's definitely a convenience type of product because it just works better in, in, in multiple ways. Post-it notes uh, versus a regular piece of paper and tape. Like you can use, you know, regular tape and paper, but yeah. like post-it notes like are just a little bit more convenient and okay. people have disposable income and they see this as a big pain point and are glad to buy it. That was my situation mm -hmm. too. I was super willing to buy something. I was willing to spend good money on a product like that. And it just wasn't out there. And I said, let me see if other people are willing to buy it. And that was a, a valuable lesson I learned was because obviously your friends and family would say it's a good idea, but then you find out strangers think it's a good idea. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where strangers are actually buying it. So it's, oh, this is a really good idea. And it's all possible through TikTok too. And then the reviews come into and people will say in the comments, oh, I'm thinking about buying this. And then one of my followers who's had the beard bar said, this is amazing. And they're all already like talking with each other between verified buyers and people that are in potentially uh, new customers too. So it's really cool to start seeing that community build it itself up, even if I'm not available all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love sales and they talk sales, they, they talk funnels things like that. A lot of people don't even think of it. Email 
funnel systems and that you feed people in. But TikTok is like really one of those top tiers on the funnel. Just drives organic people and then those people will stream into your other platforms you probably have seen that as well you have seen a few people come and follow your instagram from tiktok have you seen that yeah that's almost where all my followers come from i make a couple the instagram's got reels now too so i see some stuff like where mm -hmm. people who aren't following you can see your videos i think they're making a step in the right direction but still tech but <laughs> most of them it's like you said it's they spread into other outlets they reach out to me on email they follow my facebook page move around different areas yeah. of the web i wanted to share for brands out there who are listening or anybody because even as a person you're still a brand you're your own personal brand regardless of what you're doing in your life even if you're just wanting to share your story you're still a brand so i think it's really important for everybody to have all these socials because some people are like oh my gosh another social media and that's one of the common pain points that people say is I don't have time, but the TikTok is something that I think everyone should take a part of and, and do, but for your other social, change it up wherever you are. Don't keep sharing this same thing. I understand taking TikToks and putting them on reels. That's just a no brainer that makes to be able to mm -hmm. do that, but within your regular feed, maybe use that part to show more product images or images of you as a person and share more of a blog story within the caption and then on Facebook, you could share something different with your community. So that way, when people are coming to these pages, they're not just seeing the exact same thing. Like you want to give people a new little piece of the puzzle wherever they go. So that way they want to go to these other places. Because if it's the same thing, then what's the point? Like going to your other socials, right? They could just come here and it's all, everything's there. So a lot of people do fail with that. They just repurpose everything. And I think repurposing is great, but I also think it can be detrimental your business because if you do little bits you're going to reach more people so that's another thing that i would suggest for people that are listening that's just a little tip for me but tips from you like in regards to small businesses looking to come to this platform anything that you can just going off what you said i think was one of my biggest realizations when i was coming onto TikTok, I, I was obviously like soaking in the type of videos and what's working, what's not working before posting and stuff. And one example is seeing big brands that come onto TikTok and it's just very high production or I call it, it smells weird. It, it <laughs> yeah. something's off. Like it's just complete ad and it just fails. But I see some brands who nail it. A lot of sports teams are actually pretty funny. The yes. Detroit Lions will come in on pages and be like, come to the tryouts or something on like yeah. a random like kids, like six year olds video of a football. And it gives that human element, which totally. is, and you can be a brand and you can do that. And that's, that's what gets people excited too. So mm -hmm. there's two ways you can do it with, with, there's like a bad way where it just seems whoever made this video will or whoever's in charge hasn't spent time on the app to understand yep. it. That's going back to just starting out. If you're starting out too, it just take time to listen, take time to listen and see what's going on, how people are reacting. It's right now it's a huge melting pot of um, different age groups, but there's obviously not a culture, but just like a vibe to it where it's mm -hmm. just very organic and honestly i don't feel like i'm that interesting of a person i'm maybe a little bit more introverted but i think the actual process of w what i'm doing is super interesting and that's what interests me and it's almost like exactly. if, I were, if i were to make videos because i think about myself last year and now like, i'm getting all these opportunities and news media's outlets are reaching out and stuff and i'm like what really changed because yeah, I'm sure this can relate with some entrepreneurs who maybe haven't struck gold, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. When I look back at myself, I think I was enough. Everyone struggles with self doubt when things aren't working out and it's, what am I doing wrong? I'm seeing all these people blow up. And sometimes it's just the, the minor tweak that you can do and just put it out there, see what the feedback is and either pivot if it's not working or give people what they want if they love what you're doing and just keep trying because I think that's all you can do and it's not really up to you if you think it's a good product it's just up to the people so don't try and really spend years and years trying to perfect it just get something out there and see what the feedback is people i think have a really good eye for being able to see what it can become so even if yeah. it's just a prototype they, they can see past that 
you don't have to perfect everything, get a full stage production to make some videos and have your product perfect. Just go out there, try it. And I try to preach that maybe subconsciously with my videos where it's just, I'm not in a suit and tie. I'm, you know, just walking around. I got a little office. There's nothing yep. too crazy. I, and it, it is possible. So it's just love putting that. yourself out there. I love that, Matt. That was a great last statement to this podcast. That was really powerful right there. And it is really true, like you said, how sometimes you compare yourself to others. And I have to remind people this as well, because we all do it. We all compare ourselves. Sometimes you see a person that has created a product and they're doing so well and their business is blowing up. But the thing is, we have to remind ourselves that they're at a different point in that journey. They had a starting point back here that you didn't see. You're just seeing them in the middle part where you want to be, but you're at the start. So we all have to remind ourselves that we all are on different paths. You can't compare because somebody might've already started a while ago and now you're in the beginning. So you cannot compare yourself to that person because if you had a conversation with them, they would say, yeah, well, six months ago, I was struggling too. Like you got to keep going, keep going. So it really is the truth right there, regardless of how old you are or where you are in your journey, we all have a starting point. And the whole point is you have to continue to see results. If you just stop, then you'll never see those. So stop comparing yourself, your, your own person, your brand is your own thing. Just put it out there. Don't overthink, just go with it and see what your audience says. They might tweak it and give you some ideas where you never even have thought that. And don't be afraid to just put yourself out there. We're all human. And the more human you can be, the more real response that you're going to get from your community. And it is true, like you said, from brands who you've smelt something wrong there, right? It is true. It's those are the brands that are using their same brand focus and bringing it to TikTok when you can't be like that. You have to understand the platform. You have to understand the culture within this space. You have to realize that your brand needs to be a lot more human and, and make comments that are unique and fun and a little bit interesting. I've shared this brand a few times, but it's just one that really stands out to me. And it's a European airline called Ryanair. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen them. Have you seen them? That's a great example. They're funny. They're, it's not like offensive, but it's also not like professional. Like all professional. It's like, yeah. just, it's real, you know? So yeah, I, it's I, I, don't, I told them, yeah. And, and look, like we don't even have that airline here. Yet I would most likely fly them just because of their marketing and how funny they are. And it seems like they're actually real. And for that business that having a whole airline, you have to have money. It's not like they're a small business, right? And for them to give the go ahead for their marketing team to make some of their videos, I commend them because that takes guts. And right yeah. now, I think for your business to stand out, you have to make some gut moves like that. You have to make some big decisions with your marketing. And I just wanted to share this last tip before we close this out, but I had my business partner and one of my mentors, Duke McKenzie on my podcast. And he even said the marketing world is shifting fast. And the thing is, there's a lot of these big fortune 500 companies and jobs that are not secure right now is the CMOs of these companies, because with marketing changing so fast in the industry is if these CMOs are not figuring out how to fit in this new culture, companies are going to let them go and find somebody new that can come in and do it. You have to be bold right now. You have to be different or people mm -hmm. will just eat you up. And these small businesses coming in can be the next big business because they're making the right decisions that we all want to see. I a hundred percent agree with that. I think it's very valuable just to see what's out there and to spend some time in the platform. I think TikTok's a great platform. And if you spend some time in there, you can really learn a lot and you can see the potential of it. Even if it's not your brand, you can see someone else doing it too. And that might give you inspiration for something down the future. I go back to your last point really quick was when you mentioned to keep going, that's I think super important. And sometimes it can seem exhausting, but it's better to slow down and get some rest and to keep going than burn yourself out and work 24 yeah. seven for six months and then burn out and then stop. If you need to take time to rest for your own health, do it. Cordis in the hair example. It, so true. If you got to take baby steps, that's fine. But any movement forward is fine. Even if you can only work an hour that day, don't beat yourself mm -hmm. up about it. You're still moving forward. If you burn yourself out and you have to take six months off, you could have took baby steps and you would have beat yourself to that next point. 
don't beat yourself up where you are. Just keep trying when you're ready. And if you need to take breaks, do it. That's really important. Anybody, regardless, if you're not really doing this for business or anything, it's important to take those mental health days to just recuperate on being human and people will respect that as well. Matt, so I wanted to say for anybody listening right now, Matt, talk to us about how we can purchase your product and where we can go to find that. Sure, of course. So it's right on my website. It's Matt's Beard Bar. So it's Matt with one T, M-A-T-S, and then beard, like facial hair beard, and B-A-R. Matt'sBeardBar.com. You can Google it, Matt's Beard Bar. It's the first thing that pops up. And right in there, products are right on the front page. You can click them to see reviews or descriptions. And the process is pretty simple. Shopify makes it really easy. And I made it even easier for people that are listening to this podcast right now. All you have to do is hit the description notes of this podcast episode. You will see all the links to Matt's pages, to his TikTok, to his Instagram, and to his website where you can go ahead and make that purchase for the Matt's Beard Bard because it's really going to help you. I think you guys should definitely check out buy it for a friend. You could be buying this for a late Father's Day gift. You can still purchase one of those. Head over to Matt's Beard Bar to buy one. Quickly, I just wanted to share, there was a couple comments that came through and I'd like to shout people out that have made comments. The first one is, is Kathy Vargas. She just said, hey, I'm from Costa Rica. Hey, Kathy, I just wanted to shout you out and say thank you for listening to the podcast. And a good friend of mine, Travis Lochner, is awesome. He's uh, said, loving the stream set up and happy Father's Day. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate you. Lastly, my wife, Emily, said it looks awesome and happy Father's Day. We love you. Thanks, baby. Love you and see you upstairs in a minute. But yeah, thank you, Matt. I appreciate your time today. People listening, this is a great episode to come back to, to give you some insights and, and give you motivation to continue on your process. Where Regardless of where you are, you have these opportunities and TikTok is here to launch your business. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Kyle. It's been a pleasure. And, and you, what you got going on here is, is amazing. Keep it up.